everyone, welcome back. Uh, booking a beer. Number five, I think. This is number five. It's been a while. Um, got a couple stouts left in the beer fridge. It's getting summer. Don't have the fire anymore. So, today's beer. Double Nickel Stout. Now, a little story about the Double Nickel Stout. Um, before the craft whole big thing and before I got into really dark, something was like Guinness. I'm like, oh, you have a Guinness. That's like, that's amazing, right? Um, and I like Guinness. And then, you know, Black and Tan from Yingling. Uh, yeah, that's not bad too. I drink them now. They're okay. Yeah. But this was my gateway stout. Um, and it was at a, a bar, a restaurant in Cherry Hill. And I ordered this. And it was poured very dark. It's very, very creamy. I don't think there's lactose in this though. Of course, you don't get that Bishop's Collar that you get on a, a Guinness, but if you like Guinness, I would try something like this. You just may never go back. I mean, this is heavier. It's 8.5 APV. Um, and it's, you have chocolate in here. You got roasted barley, English hops, coffee, toffee, vanilla, chocolate, warm, it's, I mean, I'm just reading off the can, but uh, it's not a very good review if I'm just reading off the can. But this is, this was my gateway. Uh, and I had this, I remember telling my wife, Mary Jane, like, oh my God, I don't think I'll ever go back to normal stouts again. Okay, today's book. I'm jumping on the bandwagon. Grant, Ron Chernow. Now, he did Hamilton, of course. He also had a very good biography on Washington, right? These are all very, very excellent books. And Grant was one of my childhood heroes. I grew up um, loving, knowing everything about the Civil War. You know, family trips would go to Fredericksburg. we go to Chancellorsville. we go to Antietam. Did not get to Shiloh. Shiloh is what I'm missing, but Fort Sumter, Petersburg. I mean, I've been to them. I, you know, I, I just love Civil War. And I, my Uncle Ron growing up, and so my hero was, was, was Grant. And I would dress up and I wouldn't play cowboy and Indians. I would play like Union and Confederates. And so the villains for me were always the, the rebels, the Confederates. They were like traitors. Um, and, you know, we all hate Benedict Arnold. I think North and South can agree that Benedict Arnold was a traitor. But can the same be said of the South? Uh, Whitman has a great poem called um, part of his drum taps um, the West Virginia the West when he talks about Virginia the mother of us all turning the knife to kill its own mother right it's it's really really sad the sire Washington Monroe uh, Monroe you know all these great Jefferson you know Madison all these great you know found the founders of this country and what did they do they fired on Union troops right so what I loved about this book, and there's so much to like about this book, I have not seen the miniseries yet, the Leonardo DiCaprio. I've had colleagues from work, uh, history teachers and fellow fans of history, um, who really, really like it. Uh, some said it started out slow, but then it got really, really good. Um, it will not do justice, whatever, whatever it does. Hopefully it changes the conversation because we see Lee, right? I've been to Lee's home, his, um, his uh, father's home down there in Manassas um, and he's this southern gentleman he you know West Point John Brown you know Mexican War you know he was you know this accomplished West Point guy um, and to have him side with Virginia over the Union whoo right and then take arms against the Union so but I see uh, Lee having this kind of like pedigree, right? I'm a southern gentleman, um, you know, I look great, uh, I dress well, you know, he's like a Rhett Butler type. And Grant, no, he's a scrappy guy, right? Um, but I, th but he, wor he has more grit. Think about the word grit. We use that in education all the time. And this guy was like, he, he was a clerk, right? He was working in a shop and trying to survive battling alcoholism 
battling drink on the West Coast all by himself, away from his wife, uh, Julia, I believe, and he was miserable. I would be miserable too, right? Um, but he goes from being a clerk at a store, right? And I think it was his in-law's store. And he goes from that to being a commander of troops and then just moves up the chain, right? And it's amazing how he goes from, like, poverty. And his wife owned slaves, right? His wife's family owned slaves. So this was division in the family already. So for, for Grant, it was very, very personal. Um, but just what he did and what he did to conquer the demons of alcohol. People point to Grant says, well, he was an alcoholic. And of course, Abe Lincoln said, well, if everyone uh, won battles like Grant, I'd give everyone whiskey or something like that. I'm paraphrasing poorly. But, you know, but he really did battle alcoholism. And, and it was his wife who really helped him through uh, to avoid drink uh, for large sections of time. And you know, occasionally, of course, you'd go off the wagon. But, um, but it, was, it was something that could nettle him, right? And, but Winston Churchill drank. There's tons of people, artists, you know, tons of people who were big drinkers. Um, and, but it's one of these like canards that gets labeled on Grant. And of course, his presidency, he was an honest man, but he was bamboozled by so many unscrupulous people, including, you know, he invested money and lost most of it, and lost his friends, and lost, he was just destitute. He was gonna write his, he was writing his biography. This publisher said, yeah, we'll give you some money. He was gonna get, he was gonna get raped, right? He was gonna get, he, he, he's, and Mark Twain comes in, another great American, and um, who actually served with uh, the Missouri troops for about two weeks, and he said, I'm out of here, and went west, but that's another book, that's another book talk. Um, and he says, no, no, Grant, listen, I'm gonna help you here. And Mark Twain rescues the Grant family and publishes, helps, you know, works with the publisher to get Grant more money for his memoirs. Um, and thank God we have that, right? So aspects of those memoirs are in here. But of course, Ron, Chana, or Ron Chernow is going to go much more in depth. What does Grant not cover in his autobiography? And so because in an autobiography, there's things you don't want to talk about and there's things you do want to talk about. The biographer is going to go everywhere or is going to try to go everywhere. Highly recommend this book. I haven't seen the miniseries yet, so I'm going to recommend that just because history is important and we need to change the narrative. Grant needs a resurgence. He needs a musical, right? Uh, just like Hamilton, you know, think about what Hamilton did, getting from being like an orphan uh, in the Caribbean and working hard, uh, getting a scholarship. But it's, again, these types of people. We should celebrate people like Grant, a true modern American hero, rather than someone like Lee, and I know people in the South are going to hate me for this, but really, come on, you took a knife to us. You, you know, Benedict Arnold, right? Okay, so we can disagree or agree. Let's not kill each other, especially now. Um, Let's look on history, read history, know your history, and then uh, we can enjoy a beer. Um, and then, of course, we can debate if Grant did the right thing at Appomattox Courthouse, another place to visit. Um, don't know. Don't know. What was interesting, though, and I was going to end there, these things were way too long, but um, I was very surprised how Confederate generals were used, or Grant used them once they, were, they came back into the Union Army, to squash some rebellions like down in New Orleans and you know uh, the terror against African Americans and freed slaves and the Ku Klux Klan. Um, Reconstruction is a story that needs to be told. I think history teachers spend way too much on battles and uh, again I could spend a week talking about Gettysburg right it's just the way I just been there so many times I love it but we miss the narrative and especially now with uh, all the racism and the protests going on uh, slavery is our original sin and we're still fighting the Civil War, right? We're still fighting it. Uh, but reading books like this, uh, learning the facts, and not, you know, believing in fairy tales um, is a great thing. Uh, because this beer is no fairy tale. This is reality, and this is a very good beer. Uh, so drink responsibly, read voraciously, and take care. I can't wait to do another book and a beer, maybe even tomorrow. Take care, everyone.
Be safe.